Due to the fear of spreading the coronavirus, most voters are expected to cast their vote at the mailbox through absentee voting. After nearly 10 months of being trapped inside of the collapsed Hard Rock Hotel, the remains of the last victim has been recovered. Aaron's Angels distribute about $750 worth of food to students each month. Now, the average household of four doesn't even receive that amount in SNAP benefits. When cold air passes over a warm body of water, it creates moisture. That moisture then rises into the cloud day, and then clouds release snow. Advocates want Congress to add an extra $25 per month for each person that lives in a household that receives SNAP benefits. Up until now, renters and homeowners have had government protection to assure that they won't be evicted due to the lack of payments. This month, that protection is set to come to an end. Know that there are folks in the community who recognize and, and, and care um, about that pain that you may be going through and are here to help. Raleigh Van Fossen is the director of a local nonprofit that provides resources to renters and homeowners in need of financial assistance. He says that federal aid should be targeted to those facing eviction. And it can be used for eviction diversion, which is working with folks who do have a court order judgment um, to appear because of some sort of eviction related um, issue and that there may be some dollars to help them um, find relief. Democrats in Congress believe that even more funds were needed to help. So they passed what's called the HEROES Act, but the bill has been stalled in the Senate for almost two months. There are uh, hundreds of thousands of people in Michigan who are extremely concerned about what's going to happen when the rent comes due, the mortgage payment comes due, and Congress needs to act. Senator Sestabenow says Congress needs to pass the HEROES Act so that additional federal aid can be available. We should have acted before the two weeks that were not in session over July 4th. There was no excuse not to act. People's needs continue on. Congress will be back in session on July 20th, when lawmakers will focus on another round of federal aid. Gabrielle Riles, 6 News. The governor's executive order did allow for individuals um, not to wear a mask if they go to the polls, but I ask that they do anyway. On July 17th, the governor's office released an executive order stating that masks are not required to be worn at the polls. The Ingham County clerk says due to the fear of spreading COVID-19, she expects more people will be voting by absentee for the first time. 51% of the ballots that have been issued have already been received by the local clerk. That's over 32,000 ballots. State Representative Sarah Anthony, who's running to retain her seat, worries those who are voting by mail may be intimidated by the process. You know, the timeline of when to return your ballot, that process, um, many people who um, are less likely to vote, when they see mail from the government, sometimes they shy away from it. In Michigan, absentee ballots that are not received at the county's clerk's office by 8 p.m. on election night will not be counted. The American Civil Liberties Union is challenging boards of elections nationwide to count all absentee ballots that are postmarked on Election Day. Voters don't have control over the United States Postal Service. It's a very large system, and they can't necessarily determine how long it's going to take to get from their home to their, the relevant election official. The ACLU says those who have questions, concerns, or issues about absentee voting can call 1-866-OUR-VOTE. Gabrielle Riles, 6 News. When we make the announcement, we're gonna open on June 1st. You can't be over a thousand customers, you know, so excited. They like, they're happy to see us. But right now we just have to wait. Two weeks of appointments were canceled at Cosmopolitan Salon and Spa. The owner says that she was under the impression that nail salons were included in the professional services category that was listed in phase two. Uh, by all those protection, disinfected, everything we needed as they stated on the website. Huang purchased masks, six gallons of hand sanitizer, and plexiglass shields for each station at the salon. She also paid for her employees to take COVID-19 certification courses to ensure they would know all of the CDC guidelines for reopening salons. People re rely on us, so I feel, you know, responsible for all the, the girls in the salon. Wang says that she had to apply for the Paycheck Protection Program, which is a loan that is designed to provide funds to keep employees on payroll. 
especially since they won't be accepting as many clients daily as they normally would. It's gonna affect everybody because you can't take, um, you can't do back to back. So you have to kind of plan it ahead to reduce the, the traffic in the salon. Wang says that she hopes that nail salons can open by June 16th. Right now, um, I have customer calling me. We have the salon phone forward to our cell phone, so my phone are busy. It's busy.